Hello, Sillaholics, and welcome to Sillaholics Anonymous. If this is your first time here and you've never viewed any of my content, I do invite you to check out my library of videos. I hope you enjoy what you see and you will choose to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release new content. If you are a subscriber, thank you for the support and welcome back. In this quick tip video, we are going to talk about setting your preferences for the defaults. All right, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this. If you haven't seen the previous videos on setting preferences, I'm gonna go over how you can get to your preferences. You can either click on the little gear um, here in the right hand corner, bottom right hand corner of your screen. You can also go to edit and click preferences or the keyboard shortcut is control K or command K on a Mac and that's going to bring up your preference window. In this, like I said, in this video, we are going to talk about defaults, but let's go over to a screen that's a little bit clearer so we don't have the distraction of the background. So under defaults, I'm going to talk about my preferences. You may watch other videos. You may find that other things work better for you. I'm just going to talk about what my preferences are, and if you would like to mimic them on your system, you can. So your page orientation, it's set to choose automatically. This was never a really, really big issue until like version 4.3 and 4.4 as far as leaving this on choose automatically. Because depending on what the last thing you did, um, and sometimes, I mean, to me, it just defaults to where it's in landscape mode. It has become an issue. So with 4.3 and 4.4, I personally prefer to have it at portrait because, you know, I just want to see it, you know, that way when I open up my system versus having to constantly go to the page setup and then change it to portrait anyway, that's normally the, the orientation I go to. So for me, my setting is portrait. For my blade type, um, I the computer that I design on and like kind of work from, they're a little bit different and I don't necessarily have them connected to my machines. I don't use my Cameo 3 very often. I use... Um, ratchet blade. So I have three originals, a two and a three. Even on my three, I have never repurchased an auto blade. I personally don't care for them and the tap, tap, tap. So even on my three, I use a ratchet blade. So I can put it to ratchet blade, but for the most part, my um, machine, well, my uh, system I go to send, it's going to default to the ones that I have uh, plugged in which is going to be my Cameo 1 or my Cameo 2. So it's automatically going to be Ratchet Blade for me. So I don't change this. I leave it on automatic. Really no need for me to put it on Ratchet, although I use nothing but Ratchet Blades. I do not use the Auto Blade at all. So then your default fill style. You can have it to where it will fill with a solid color every time you make a shape. Or it can just be an outline and the middle part is empty. So a lot of people think that that's like when it's not that way that there's something wrong. Of course, the default for Silhouette Studio is to have just a red outline and a transparent, whether it's box or when you type out text. So you can have it filled and default it to a color, maybe white if you want it to always be that way, or leave it on outline. And then your outline can be black or red. A lot of people associate red with being the cut line. That's technically not the case because you can make a line black, you can make a line purple, green, or whatever, and it's still going to cut. When you have designer edition or above, there are options to cut by color and you can cut based off your line colors. We will talk about that in a separate video. Um, but I just leave it this part at the default. It's gonna be transparent. I leave it at red. It's a little bit easier for my eyes to see versus the black. Always display matte. A lot of people are using Silhouette Studio as a design program for sublimation. You have no machine whatsoever. So you can have it to where you it will always display the matte or it doesn't have to like display the matte. Um, for me, it always comes up no matter what anyway. I don't even have this selected, yet it always displays the map, so it doesn't necessarily come up without the map. Um, although with version 4.4, maybe it's a little bit different. I know in 4.3, it still came up regardless, um, but if you are doing sublimation, you don't necessarily need the map, so you don't have to have that on. 
your crosshair color. Most people don't use it and you have to have the upgraded version for the crosshairs. You can have it in black, which sometimes can be a little bit harder to see. Let's see if I can get mine to come up with the keyboard shortcut. It's not because I'm in this window. Um, or it can be red. Um, cut to edge of page. This is something that I always have checked. Reason for that, which I'm going to show you that one. Um, let's go and, well, now that's there, I'll turn it on. So I'm going to just hit OK. And we're going to show you. Let's go over here to our page setup. Show cut border. So with it set up this way, you are able to cut literally to the edge of the page, of like your vinyl, your paper, whatever it is. This setting is imperative that it is selected if you are going to use a non-silhouette mat um, with your machines. Because I do have a video on how to set up non-silhouette mats so that you're able to cut on it and you're getting accurate cuts and it's in the area. It's not cutting too high, too low when you're doing print and cut so that it registers properly. You have to have this set up in order to set up the mat for uh, print and cuts. So this is imperative if you are using a non-silhouette mat to set it to cut edge. I'm going to go ahead and turn on those crosshairs. So see, this is when it's black, it's more of a grayish color. You can also have it be red. So I'm going to go back to my preferences. We're going to go to defaults. I'm going to change that to red. We'll change afterwards. And I'm also going to deselect cut to edge of page. And we're going to hit OK. And you're going to see my cut line jump and you see the crosshairs change. So that's, again, personal preference. Some people don't like the crosshairs. I do have a video that's called Annoying But Useful Tools. Check that video out. The link for that will be at the end of this video if you want to go check that out. I'm going to turn those off for right now. And the keyboard shortcut to toggle them on and off is H. But you see where my cut line jumped to? When you have it set to not cut to the edge, you can't go to the edge. So you can't utilize, like if you're really trying to stretch and use every portion of a piece of vinyl, you're going to lose, um, is it what, like a 1.25 inches all the way around. So you're gonna lose in total about a quarter of an inch um, of vinyl all the way around. So like between the two sides, the middle part is technically um, a quarter of an inch smaller and then top to bottom, it's a quarter of an inch smaller. So it's a personal preference on how you want it set up. My recommendation is to just take advantage of every piece of real estate and have it set to cut to edge. All right, let's go back, control K, get back to our preferences. And let's go back to defaults. Again, my crosshairs, I like them at black. I don't like the red. We're gonna go here. Um, for me, there's no need to have your registration marks all on all the time. So I don't really understand the purpose of this. No one is doing print and cuts all, well, I guess maybe if you are a sticker person, but even when I design stickers, I don't necessarily like to have the registration marks on immediately. I like to design and then pull them in. So unless you're doing print and cuts every single day and that's all you use yours for, there's really no need to have this. The center of rotation, it is a good idea to have it off if that is annoying to you. If you have it on, um, you have to toggle it on and off when you need it. It does have its benefits. Again, check out that video. Uh, but if you have it checked, it's always going to be on. And if you have things that are really, really small, when you go to select them and move them, it's going to move the center of rotation first before it moves the image, depending on where you or the, the shape or the letter, depending on where you click on it. So I do recommend that you leave this unchecked. And then for your panel mode, as far as these. So flexible panel mode, single panel mode, multiple panel mode. So flexible, just... Um, like, okay, let's go to multiple, allows you to have, let's see if it'll do it. No, because I didn't hit, okay. But it will allow you to have more than one open at a time. So we're just gonna click and see, it's gonna just drop it down like that. And you can have all of these panels open and you can close them and do different things with them. All right, let's go back to control K. When you have it on, single let's 
let's click off of these because they were already open so they're going to kind of be there see you can't click on it's you see how the delay is as far as like um it won't do more than one it's going to switch to um a different one although i didn't mean to click on handwriting now it's going to take a little minute because it's going to try and bring up the window for handwriting and that one takes a little bit of time so now with these you can like move them around and detach them uh, from the side you can still do that but it will only be one and then let's go back And with flexible, it can kind of sort of be um, either or. It will kind of go to here, but you can um, bring up other ones. So once you de like once you undock it from the corner and you move it, it allows you to open up another one here, and you can pull them and have multiples. But as long as this one is docked up here, when you click on something else it's going to get rid of that one and replace it with something else. But once you move them, but with the single, if you move it, it's still only going to be just that one, all right? So that's how that works. I leave mine on flexible. Most times it kind of functions as a um, single unless I move it. And that's all of the preferences in our default section that we have to go over. The next one I'm gonna go over is display. Um, not very much to that one, but I will put that one as a separate video. And we've already done the one for tools. And we'll also do import, you know, if you're bringing in SVGs and DXFs and things like that. All right, guys, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have any additional questions or suggestions for quick tip videos, do not hesitate to leave them as a comment below. Um, if you are on Facebook, check out my Facebook page, Sillaholics Anonymous. I go live on there almost daily with um, live Q&As, and you can get your questions answered live. You can also join my Facebook group, Sillaholics Anonymous, Silhouette Help, and post your questions there. And, you know, I'm always on there, so I would see your questions daily versus posting them on the comments here on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, share the channel with a friend, share it in a group. Sharing is caring. I do appreciate the support and um, knowing that you enjoy the content enough to share it with someone else. All right. All right, guys. Until next time. Have a great one.